Hello, this is Dr. David A. Paget, and the title of my talk is Global Learning and Observations to Benefit the Environment. Historically Black College University Informal Education Institution Collaborative, exploring the intersections among COVID-19, Particulate Matter 2.5, vulnerable populations, and the urban heat island effect across five U.S. cities. Uh, I am the Associate Professor of Geography and Globe Trainer at Tennessee State University, and I also serve as Director of the Geographic Information Sciences Laboratory. Uh, this project is part of the GLOBE Mission Earth Project at the uh, Tennessee State University GLOBE Partnership. Uh, during the first five years of the project, uh, we primarily focused upon the implementation of GLOBE protocols at local partner schools and also the certification of pre-service teachers in the GLOBE Atmosphere protocols. Uh, as a result of the experience that we had over the first five years, uh, we have decided for the next five years of the project uh, to partner with informal education institutions as we learned that the uh, traditional GLOBE model is somewhat unstable in urban school systems as the model depends upon teachers to remain at one school, but in many urban systems, uh, school teachers tend to stay one year maybe two years and they move on. We believe that by partnering with informal education institutions, we can provide a more stable uh, application of GLOBE. Uh, so the GLOBE HBCU Informal Education Institution Collaborative was established in 2020. Uh, we are working with the GLOBE and Earth System Science Collaborative uh, that is hosted by uh, the University's Consortium for Atmospheric Research and Boulder, Colorado. Uh, the institutions include Tennessee State University in Nashville, Tennessee, uh, the Green Door Initiative in Detroit, Michigan, the uh, Legacy Bridges STEM Academy in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Xavier University in New Orleans, Louisiana, and the West Atlanta Watershed Alliance in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, our goals are to develop a working model or increasing the numbers of in-service teachers uh, who teach science, specifically those who will be teaching science in uh, communities with populations underrepresented in science, technology, engineering, and math. Uh, we believe that GLOBE provides an excellent model for uh, hands-on scientific inquiry, which will increase the numbers of children and young people entering the science fields. Uh, Tennessee State University produces more teachers than any other HBCU. Not many of them or very few decide to go into uh, science teaching. Uh, we hope that this model or this collaborative will change that. And so the way that we, we will work is to take the model for uh, GLOBE implementation in communities that we uh, developed over the first five years of the Globe Mission Earth Project at TSU, uh, where we uh, go into schools. Uh, we have uh, a near peer uh, education model with uh, college students working with high school students. And we want to extend this to working with families and communities in formal and informal uh, K through 12 institutions. Uh, we plan to expand the GLOBE partnerships at HBCUs by training uh, HBCU faculty and simultaneously training citizen scientists uh, at informal educational institutions. Uh, we plan to focus upon the GLOBE atmosphere protocols because the atmosphere is everywhere. And so no matter where a school is or no matter where an informal education institution is, uh, we, they have access to the atmosphere. Uh, and so the GLOBE atmosphere protocols uh, provide hands-on uh, scientific inquiry uh, for all ages, uh, K through 12. Uh, one, of the, one of our approach is 
to focus upon the urban heat island as a way to educate uh, citizens and K through 12 students about global warming. Uh, global warming is taught sometimes as an abstract concept, primarily involving uh, glaciers melting or polar bears losing habitat or sea level rise. Uh, a lot of these concepts are a little bit foreign to students in inner cities. When we start to talk about urban heat islands and the impact that urban heat islands have upon health, uh, we really get students' attention. So when we connect climate change to health, that makes it personal. That makes students really open their eyes and say, hey, uh, climate change can affect me directly, if, if, especially if I'm asthmatic or if my grandmother has COPD. Uh, and now we're looking at the cross-section between air quality, climate change, and COVID-19. And so speaking of health, uh, heat, in fact, kills more people than any other uh, weather-related hazard. A lot of people don't know that. More than hurricanes, more than tornadoes, more than flooding, heat. And so when we start to look at urban heat islands, uh, it really garners the attention of our students and perhaps their families, as there are specific ways that even young people can protect their families from succumbing to the dangers of urban heat and urban heat islands. And we only expect for these urban heat islands impacts upon health to be exacerbated through time. Uh, I've made a few um, modifications to the globe surface temperature protocol so that uh, we can not only go out and collect these data, but also uh, visualize these data using ArcGIS Online. And so ArcGIS Online is freely available, at least the public version is. It's very easy uh, and easy to turn these data collected in the field for surface temperatures into GIS maps, which provides the students with access to uh, Microsoft Excel as they have to build the attribute data table. Uh, and then, of course, geographic information systems with ArcGIS Online. Uh, and so here is one of our, some photographs from our work at a um, local high school. We hope to replicate this model all over the country with college students provide, being role models for students who perhaps uh, don't see college students A and don't see college students B who are majoring in STEM fields. Uh, we also, during this process, have pre-service teachers working with these students. Under ordinary circumstances, when teachers or pre-service teachers or in-service teachers go through GLOBE training, there are no students present. Uh, by actually engaging with these students using the GLOBE protocols, these pre-service teachers get a more realistic uh, idea of what it's like to teach science uh, and in the, they will be able to prepare themselves to do so in the future, at least that's the plan. And so here is a um, map of an urban heat islands exercise with take using globe data. And so you see here, students can very easily see that the um, surface temperature compared to the ambient temperature is most closer together than uh, in the shade. And then a few feet away or a few meters away if we're using globe, we can see that the surface temperature is significantly higher than the ambient temperature. Uh, and so that way we can create a data visualization that makes things very easily understandable to students. And then we can push beyond those simple uh, facts to other parts of the lesson about the atmosphere and, and atmospheric science and energy wavelengths and so on and so forth. We also hope to, to expect to replicate this activity also. Um, and now that we are in a virtual environment, uh, we were using Zoom to connect our students to high school students even before COVID-19. So we already have this model in place uh, where we can uh, connect college students to high school students in a collaborative effort to build and analyze ArcGIS online maps containing GLOBE data. Uh, moving forward, we're now looking at um, looking at the correlation between COVID-19 and vulnerable populations uh, across the five cities in our collaborative. This is a map of Nashville, Tennessee's COVID-19 clusters 
overlaid upon a map of COVID-19 vulnerability indexes by census tract. Uh, and so now we can get a neighborhood by neighborhood idea of vulnerability to COVID-19. Uh, we're also going to look at uh, overlays with particulate matter 2.5 measurements uh, so that we can find where our most vulnerable communities are as we move forward in assisting communities to place uh, COVID-19 testing centers. Right now, there is the uh, new phenomenon of what we call COVID-19 testing deserts, where there are communities that might be at most risk and most vulnerable to COVID-19 and yet have very few testing centers. Uh, in Nashville, Tennessee, we're very fortunate to have Meharry Medical College fill in the gaps of where, uh, where mainstream COVID-19 testing centers are not located. And so other cities don't have the um, advantage or the privilege of having a Meharry Medical College in place, but we can still use maps like this to um, empower communities to make demands for more testing centers. Uh, making demands without evidence or without proof is very difficult. And so we hope that these maps will uh, provide a way for our uh, collaborative uh, cities and their communities to have a more equitable and effective placement of COVID-19 testing sites. Uh, so again, our expected outcomes over the next five years, more HBCU Global Partnerships, uh, more uh, teachers from HBCUs teaching science and hopefully going to schools that are predominantly African-American or schools that have uh, underrepresented populations in STEM. And in the long run, we hope to close the racial achievement gap in STEM or at least make an effort to do so. So again, this project is funded by the uh, Globe Mission Earth Project. Uh, Dr. Kevin Zakowski, a principal investigator. Uh, there are some of the uh, links to our project. And thank you very much for your time and attention. Again, I'm Dr. David A. Paget, Tennessee State University, Nashville, Tennessee.